estamos bien, estamos bien. Estamos bien. Estamos bien. I like the for the culture right now, bro. It's, it's looking good, bro. It's looking good. How are you feeling today, Dan? Hey, man, I'm feeling blessed. Right here at For the Culture, Inland Empire, DTB Times, KO here, Inland Empire. We here, yo. Brought the DTB podcast over here. We got a few interviews ready, lined up for y'all. It's fire. Yeah, remember, go check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe, follow, turn on your notifications. Make sure you stay tuned for the special segment, For the Culture Times, DTB podcast. Season two, coming soon. Let's go. Ooh. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to the DTB Podcast, the number one barber podcast on YouTube and of the world. Today, we have a special guest. But before we get started, we want to remind you all to go please subscribe to our channel. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, you become part of this community. You help the vision move forward. Today, we're going to have a special guest, and we're going to pass it up to our co-host. What's good, DTB fam? We here, we live. We are in Ontario, California, and today we got a great special guest, the CEO of Main Tame, Richard Thomas. Let's go! Woo! How you feeling, Richard, man? Hey, let I'm us feeling, know. Let us know, man. I, I feel the energy. How how you feeling, man? I'm feeling great. Happy to be here. I've been, you know, I've been a fan of you guys for a while. I've been staying in touch, you know, with some of the interviews you guys have been conducting. One of the things I appreciate most is what you guys do for the culture, for the barber industry. So I'm excited to be here with you guys. Yeah, thank you for being yeah. with us too, Dan. Today we want to uh, listen to your journey. I feel we could learn a lot from your journey. A lot of barbers want to start a brand. A lot of barbers want to be CEOs. And I think uh, you're a perfect representation of that. So uh, we want to start off by you walking us through your journey and how you started uh, in the barber career. And then we could jump into the branding. Absolutely. So I actually got my start in the beauty industry, in the distribution side. Okay. So I started in 2008, and then for eight years, I just learned, you know, the beauty industry. I learned distribution. I studied brands, and I worked for a company called Nancy's Beauty Warehouse, uh, okay. dis distributing some of the most major brands in the beauty and barber industry. So I, I paid special attention to the brands that worked, and I was really fascinated with the brands that Everything was done right. Packaging was perfect. The pricing was perfect. The name brand, awesome. And it still flopped. And I was fascinated, like, like why is that? Why yeah. can a brand seemingly do everything correct and then it doesn't work, you know? And then you counter that and there's brands that they do nothing right, at least on the surface. You're yeah. like, and then you're like, I don't get it. I don't uh, understand what is this brand doing right, you know? So I became fascinated with the psychology of the barber industry specifically. And so looking behind the scenes, I think under, you know, under the surface of it was really a fascinating thing for me. So that was for about eight years. In 2016, a business partner of mine, we came together and we looked at the landscape and we were thinking, should we make a beauty brand, a barber brand? You know, what category should we look? So we studied the entire landscape of the industry. We looked at nail polish, hair color, barber furniture, you know, tools, clippers, everything, right? Yeah. And what we decided to do was to be authentic. And that's one of the best things that we could have done. And for me, I'm passionate about hair. I, I've, been, I've been doing my hair since I was a little kid. I've yeah. always been passionate about doing my hair. You know, so, so I went towards a path that allowed me to be my own customer, allowed me to be my own focus group, where I made products for myself. And I kind of just stayed true to that since 2016. And we've just been listening to the barber industry, listening to the community, and making products that are intentional, making products that serve a purpose. And that's that's how we got started. Uh, yeah, that's the, and what was, what was your biggest challenge? When you wanted to launch the, the product, what was the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge was, uh, you know, trying to make a name for yourself. There's so many brands that already have a head start. They already exist. I'm sure in the podcast world too, YouTube, right? Like yeah. everybody, there's so many 2 million podcasts in front, but you can't worry about that, right? It's like, what makes us different? And the biggest challenge was digging deep to ask myself, how am I different? Because there's a lot of other CEOs that they have a lot more flash, other CEOs in my space, they're actually barbers. Um, I don't speak Spanish, so like in the barber industry, that's a little bit of a disadvantage. Oh, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it can be, it can be. Yeah. So, um, you know, so the biggest challenge for me was really 
trying to make a splash in the beginning to say like we're here and the way we did that was actually going to trade shows like this mm. it was uh building a team those are the two biggest challenges in the beginning yeah. you know trying to build a team find people that represent you shared common values and uh you know everyone wanting to to make their mark because in the beginning it's easy for people to want to work with you who just want the clout yeah, yeah they yeah. just want the credibility great, great. right but they don't want to put the work in they don't want to put the work in or they're not they don't know who they are and if someone doesn't know who they are imagine if your co-host you know or you have another person they don't know who they are and then you're like how do you communicate yeah, like yeah. you're passionate and then like different passions are going to create different results you know because people and products are the same because there's like ingredients Correct. there's a synergy that you two guys have together that makes it work and i think products are the same way and all of our products the same way and having a team a barber team that's the same way everybody has to come together everyone has to have the same goal i look at my team like superheroes with a different set of powers mm. and i try to like harness that all together towards a common goal you know right. yeah so, so uh what does maintain mean and what does it stand for yeah absolutely bro. I, i always i always wonder that i don't know you yeah wonder. i actually i was thinking like how did maintain come to life like I, I what, know, what like I know tame tame the beast I think or or like that's kind of what I thought like and, oh, and I see you, a and lion I see like a lion so yeah. it's probably like we wake up we wake up and our hair is like all over the place and you tame the beast by using that main tame product that's the only thing I could think of you know but I'm sure there's a meaningful meaning to it can you share with us what the meaning is uh, how did that come about how you guys come up with the name main tame absolutely that's a great question and you know it's great because it's so important it's such an important foundational step that not a lot of people have asked me so thank you for asking that question so when i was getting started i created our logo before i even created the brand name because okay. i knew that um you know in order for a brand to really resonate and connect that men have to feel an association to that so immediately i went to work and i was designing like i was thinking tigers and gorillas and I'm like gorilla something tiger this and that and then I thought you know what if I were to I didn't have money to do big research I'm you know in a room by myself you know when you're starting you're by yourself yeah, in the room yeah. right so I asked myself if you were to go around and ask every single man at this show just you know there's like about a thousand people here right now if you were to ask every single man hey bro what's one animal that you identify with the most I think I think I would put money most men think they're a lion yeah the king of the jungle i'm the yep. lion yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. now is that true probably not you know not everybody is a lion there might be people that's like a giraffe or like an eagle or, or, eagle, cool. or eagle, eagle, yeah. Yeah. there's some other cool things out there too yeah but that you know what is the most important thing is that when we're in our bathroom by ourselves and we're styling our hair we're taking care of our skin we're getting ready for our day man you are a lion That's you right. are you are a lion. Yeah. So then I went to work I I reverse engineered that. So we designed the lion, we designed the logo, and then we reverse engineered that. So then that made it easier for me to think of a name. So then it's okay, we got the lion. Now I actually I wanted to call it uh Tame Mane. It kind of sounds silly right now, but at the time in 20 2015 when I was designing all this stuff, I thought Tame Mane that sounds sick, right? But there was another company that had trademarks that had like all around it. Once you oh. want to start something, you have to go on the, you know, the USPTO.gov. That's correct. To make sure, like, you know, what's going on. And um, maintain was the was the trademark. And actually, we had to, uh, when we filed for the trademark, the full name is Maintain Professional Men's Grooming. Men's Grooming, yeah. Yeah, so that's correct. the whole trademark. Yes, yes, yes. But, but to me, maintain stands for exactly that. Being the best version of yourself beauty strength strength comes in a lot of different areas yeah. there's some men that are maybe not physically strong but they're the head of their household right they're disciplined and i think discipline strength integrity that's that's main tame so we stand for people that stand for something you that's know dope. i like that i like to have a way of doing things and I, i think like if you hold the door open for people at a store that's main tame if you return the shopping cart to the stalls at the grocery store that's main tame so i i, I i'm trying to create a culture of uh, of unity of like-minded people who think the same way yeah i like that because you're also promoting masculinity and i feel like right now in this era uh there's not a lot of men speaking out on masculinity which is opening the door you know 
greeting people, shaking their hand, looking looking at the person into the eyes while you speak to them, you know? And that's something that I've been going through recently. Right now that I became a husband and a dad, I was like, I actually want to be the protector of my home. And it goes back to like being the lion, you know? Like, you want to protect your home from the enemies, from intruders, you know, from anything that might come from the outside, you know? So I, I, lo I love that. What, what would you say that is your biggest success right now in, with the brand? Like, what's your biggest accomplishment that you're mostly proud of right now? Um, you know, there's a couple things. Uh, I'll, I'll give you two things. Number one is the people, is the people that work with us. I'm so proud of my team because you can make, anybody can make a product. If you mm -hmm. have enough money, you can, you can make, make a product. product. Yeah, correct, correct. But, you know, in order to find people who want to make something of themselves and then you handpick these people and you work with them and you groom them, they are all growing together. So I have 11 people on my team. 11 people. Oh. And, and when I look at all of them, they're all much better off than when we first met, than when we first started. And Maintain is much better off too. And I think that's a testament. That makes me very proud that I can have, you know, great people that we get to work with mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't take them for granted at all. And my, my team, they're very unique in that of course, you know, we, we pay them and it makes sense. It's, it's also, it's a transactional yeah, relationship, yeah, correct, right? Correct. But they don't do it for the money. They never ask, what's my day rate? Am I going to get paid for that? Oh, I bought lunch. What's my flight? Like never, like I, we take care of our people, but they don't, they're not thinking about themselves first. They're very brand first oriented. And as a brand, mm. we are customer first oriented. Mm, yeah, so yeah. I think those are two things that were, that were really, uh, that's the first thing we're really proud about. The other thing, which is a very exciting thing, we actually just got selected for uh, Walmart is launching their pro experience uh, division and yeah. Maintain was one of five brands that Walmart has taken in to their professional uh, the professional space uh, online on their digital experience. Okay. So w what is that exactly that Walmart's going to do? So Walmart has a marketplace like Amazon. Correct. So Walmart is launching a pro experience where only professional, like top professional brands. Mm. So like they're only taking five brands like uh, for the Clipper brands, it's, you know, Babyliss, Wall, Andis, Stylecraft. I forget the other one, but they're taking those. And for the hair products, Walmart selected Maintain to be one of the five brands. The only other brand I know for sure is Paul Mitchell. Oh, so, Paul Mitchell? Okay. So just to be in the category with Paul Mitchell, yeah, I mean, yeah. bro, like, they've been around since, like, the 60s, yeah, 70s, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, have and, a long right. time in the and, game. and we're only eight years old. So to be in that conversation and to be, you know, partners with Walmart on this thing, on this new venture, is very exciting. Congratulations, Thank man. You, bro. That's, that's yeah, really congratulations, dope. Congratulations, bro. I see. So is the goal to have maintain on the shelves at Walmart at one point or just keeping it digital for now or is it going to be both? My goal, my end goal is to be, I want to be the king of the shower, the king of the bathroom counter and the king of the back bar. So what I mean is like, I want to be in every man's shower. I want to have, you know, pause. I want to have, you know, every sh like shampoo. I want my shampoo in men's showers. I want my pomades and hairsprays on the bathroom counter okay. and I want to be in every professional barbershop, every salon, I want my products there. And if we can get there through digital experience only, I'll take it. If we can get there through, you know, Walmart or Target, that that's cool too. We're really focused on the customer and where Walmart excites us is because the only thing that we're missing, I feel like big right now, is that people know us, they like us, but they can't find our products nationwide. We don't have a nationwide distributor oh, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the next thing that once we get that, it's going to be amazing. Because we get DMs all the time, you know, where can I find your products? And, you know, people want to buy from their local stores. They want to be able to find it in their stores where they buy products. Is there a high cost for distribution, like for nationwide distribution? Is it a high cost? That's why you, you will rather partner up with someone? No, I think it's just the number of doors. Yeah, okay. it's, just, it's, it's just having enough because like, you know, let's say we get um, sports clips as an example. We just launched a, a presentation to sports clips this week. So sports clips has 1900 locations all yeah, around the country. Yeah. So if we get maintained into sports clips, now every, you know, most men in most major markets yeah. will be able to see our stuff. Where right. right now, you know, we do heavy pushes on social media, but they can't find it anywhere else except online. Except so online. that's a little bit of a gap and it, that's an advantage that some of the brands who are came a little bit before us, they have that placement. Correct, some correct. of those other brands. And, and from job. a client perspective, I told my wife, I hate ordering stuff online. I just, I, for me, I just hate it. 
Like, if I could go to the store and, like, if I need a toothpaste or a pomade, and I could just go to the store and leave with that product, that's my satisfaction. Yeah. You know? So that is a big problem that that you have to uh, uh, solve. But I think you are you're, you have a great vision, a great goal for it. Uh, so let's move on to the CEO part, bro. Like, like I wrote down, uh, everybody wants to be a CEO, right? But what does it really mean to be a CEO? Especially in the first five years. Especially in the first year. I know it's way different than what it is right now, you know? So can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. So it's a, man, it's a lonely job. <laughs> <laughs> Super lonely. It is, it is lonely because, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning, you are in a room by yourself. Yeah. You're making every decision by yourself. Now, it's yeah. a big. if it's a big company, you have your sales manager, your marketing manager, your head of product development. You got HR. You have HR. You have your legal team. You have finance. Finance. Everybody's in the room, and they're going to give you an update. In the beginning, dude, you are sitting in a room by yourself. You are the head of every department. You have yeah. to make the best decisions, yeah. and you have to do two things. Number one, you have to know, you have to have vision to know have vision. what do I want to do, where do we want to go, and then you have to have the ability to be able to say, okay, everything is important, but what is the priority? What's the order of things that things need to go? You know, there's a certain sequence of things. Yeah, yeah, like correct. One of the things that we kind of got wrong, what we kind of got right, is in the beginning, we spent a lot of money on uh, advertising, on digital ads. Oh, okay the, okay. the problem was our website was terrible in the beginning. So we were spending, you know, $10,000 a month because everyone said you have to advertise yeah, if you want to yeah. drive traffic. Correct. But then we were wondering, why are we only getting... $500, $1,000 a month of sales. Mm. It hurts. Our first year, our first year, the whole year, we only did 25000 in sales. 25000 The whole year, 25000 wow. in sales. And our expenses were 110000 No way. 110000 yeah. yeah. So in the beginning, you're by yourself and you're like, what What should I do next? What's the thing to do next? What, like what I should have done in that example, I should have built up my website to be really perfect, to handle the traffic, to be priced right, and I should have done photography to have high quality photos. Because if you're gonna charge your premium, whether you're cutting hair, styling hair, or you're making hair products, you better have a website with images that match that price point. Yeah. So to me, being a CEO is about having that vision and also the clarity in order to prioritize the order in which that things need to go. And in the beginning, like I said, you have to really be authentic. You have to really know who am I, why am I doing this? What's the goal of the website? What's the goal of social? Because that's going to steer you in the right direction right, to make right. sure you could hopefully avoid as many distractions as possible. Right, right. So right now you have how many products right now with uh, main tame? I know you guys have like a pomade, the zero gravity spray, which is my favorite of yeah. all. Oh, yeah. um, what else do you guys have? And what is your number one seller right now? Yeah, so we have eight products, uh, eight core products in our styling line. Okay. Uh, but overall, all the products that we have, including aftershaves and, and all the, you know, we also have shears and a lot of barber cases are huge. Correct. Uh, in total, we have about 24 products in total. Um, so some of those things are only sold in professional, like aftershaves. Most retail are not going to buy aftershaves, oh. like, you know, the sprays or the, the yeah, full-size yeah. 16 ounce Why is that? Ours. Why is that? Because of the chemicals or what? Well, I think that um, price point, you know, when, when you think aftershave, if you go to Target and buy an aftershave, you can get an aftershave for like $8, $10. But, you know, so for ours, and ours are spray, we have the micro sprayer. Oh, okay. So, you know, it's more of a bar, it's more geared towards barbers, the functionality right. of it, yeah. Um, our best sellers overall are our aerosols. That's okay. that's kind of what put us on the map is our aerosols. And again, back to uh, one of the things that we probably got right was in the beginning, we were thinking about what products should we make. Everyone has a hair gel, a pomade. So we're like, we need a hair gel or a pomade. I told my business partner, we need to make hairsprays. And he was like, dude, men don't use hairspray. And I said, you're right, you're right. But you know what? I use hairspray. Yeah. I'm a little bit weird. And I, think I use hairspray too. Yeah, go, I yeah. use hairspray, yeah. So I was like, you know what? Um, well, you know, there's, there's two things. Let's go towards a category that not a lot of people are focusing. 
Because if you want to come out and be the number one pomade, well, that's hard. You need to overcome a lot of great brands yeah. to right. be the number one pomade. But can I be a top five or top three hairspray? Hell yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah that's pretty, correct. Pretty easily. So, um, yeah, our aerosols are our biggest portion of the business. And uh, definitely our zero gravity is our number one seller. Zero gravity, the best way to describe our zero gravity would be, it's almost like if you got a texture powder, you put it into a hair dryer, and you blow the hair dryer with the cool shot. That's what zero gravity comes out like. Right and on. it just adds so much fullness and volume yeah, to the hair. Yeah. Like, yeah, zero gravity is our home run product. Yeah, I like the packaging too, the way the bottle, it looks really aesthetic. The one I personally use a lot is uh, shaving gel. I, I use that, I, I buy like three, I go through them like a month. And every time I put it on, on the client, they're like, Damn, that smells good, bro. Like, what did you put on? And like, oh, it's just shaving gel, bro. Uh, but that's that's a product I, I mainly use from Maintain. Mm -hmm. With our product development, I'm glad you say that because we spend so much money on fragrances. You know, we I think I think uh, the approximate cost is about 50 cents of the cost is just the fragrance. Oh wow! wow. That is way, and like from what well, like product development people tell me, that's way too much. It should be Damn. like five cents. Like it should not be that much. But it's because we get these really fine ingredients from like colognes. We kind of like um, reverse engineer certain colognes and we kind of make a certain mix of that. And uh, that's how, you know, our fragrances are a big part of our brand story. What is uh, some exciting news that you have for your followers and everyone that follows the Maintain brand? Is there, is there a new product coming out soon? Are, are you guys just working on, you know, making these products and getting it out uh, nationwide along with hopefully worldwide. Yeah, the, the biggest thing that we're doing for our customers right now is expanding distribution. That's the mo we're making Maintain available in more places around the country. And you know, we're doing that with partnerships like, you know, Sports Cliffs, which we're working on right now with uh, Walmart with their pro experience. You know, those are things that we're going to do so in the next, you know, 6 months, customers are going to be able to find Maintain at a lot more places, make it a lot more accessible. And some of the behind the scenes, behind the scenes work that we're also doing when we first started making products, we were making, you know, 1,500 pieces at a time. Well, now as our brand is growing, we're making more and more products. We're owning our formulas. So we're going to see some of those price points come down on select items to make our products available at a more affordable price. And uh, that's it kind of doesn't sound sexy, you know, but like for people who make products and make brands, uh, that is really hard thing to do to mm, yeah. make to get more products to make it better and make it cheaper so you can offer it to more people yeah. at an affordable price. At, we right. look at maintain like an affordable luxury. Yeah, That's and, what and without jeopardizing the, the quality of it, right? A hundred percent. I was uh, I went to a CT Barber Expo and uh, the CEO Level Three. He was talking about branding and price points. So. You could either be a luxury brand, but a product brand, but it's too expensive, right? Or you could go like level three and not have the best ingredients, but it's affordable. And then he just adds, where do you want to be? Like, whatever you want to do, if you want to do a brand, make sure you're clear on this. You know, you don't want to be too expensive and you also don't want to be too cheap, right? So, because I know as it gets more affordable, you might be jeopardizing uh, the quality. So, uh, how important uh, is it to study your competitors, and who are some of your competitors that you have studied? Uh, because I think that's really important, right? Uh, humbling yourself down and being like, uh, let me go study. Like for my example, we sat down. We're like, hey, let's go look at all the barber podcasts, and we went through all their podcasts and right. all their subscribers, and we were just studying them, bro. So, how important was that for your growth? It was uh, extremely important. Extremely important because th th uh, there's so many great brands that they set the benchmark. Right. They set the benchmark. And it may not be for what you like or you don't want to be like them necessarily, but you have to look at why are my customers buying these products? Are they buying because there's no better option? Are they buying because... Um, because of the price point, you know, and I think for us that that guided us in the beginning. So it's like, okay, we want to be a luxury brand, but we want to be affordable, right? That was what we wanted to do because you know, luxury brands have luxury 
profit margins. And with that, you could do more things. You could hire more people. You could go to more shows. You could travel more and do the things you need to do to grow the brand. But we definitely looked at all of our competitors in order to find an open space. You know, like as an example for me, I thought, well, I can't dance better than the CEOs of other companies. I can't, yeah. right? I can't, you know, fly to other countries and speak Spanish. Damn, I can't do that, right? But I think that um, could I communicate as well as some of them? Yeah. Could I tell our brand story as much as them? Yeah. Could I personally, you know, come and touch people? Yeah. So I looked at them with appreciation and gratitude because they've come before us and set a really high mark. Yeah. But it's also left room for us to identify where's the space that we can go to also serve customers that maybe want some of the things that we want. And uh, some of our competitors that we looked at, I really tried to study the people that came before that are so big. Oh, was it like Pacinos? No, actually, like American Crew. American Crew, yeah. American Crew. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. looking at people. I mean, American Crew, number one on Amazon, number one in Sally Beauty, number one in CVS. And they got like number 40, one in 50 Walmart. years, right? 40, 50 oh. years, man. They're do so I'm looking at American Crew. I'm looking at Paul Mitchell. You know, I'm looking at these international brands. You know, you got to think big, right? Like, if you're going to go after a podcast, like, it's like Joe Rogan, right? Yeah, like, Joe it's Rogan. Like, yeah, right? It's Club Shay Shay. Yeah, Club Shay Shay. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, like, just shoot there. Because I think if you if you try knocking off the people that are just like right in front of you, yeah, that's important too. Because you're like, oh, I, I just got to be better than them? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, you'll be better than them by focusing on like the top spot. Mm. And so for us, it was American Crew, iconic brand status. That was the number one brand that I'm like, I want to chop down that tree. Yeah. Now, along the way, I have to run alongside some of these other brands that are kicking our butt in the beginning, and that's cool. That's all, that's all good. Yeah. But I'm, I'm thinking international, I'm thinking global, and I'm thinking broad. So that's mm. why I'm trying to bring my price point down, trying to make sure that we don't have too many products, trying to find some of the things that they did right, but also when you study what they do right, you can notice things that they might have overlooked. Correct. And, Correct. and if, if, that's, if that's something you do very well, you go all in on that. Dope. How important is it, Richard, to to connect with the ambassadors in your team and selecting the right ambassadors that you want to represent your brand? How, how important and how difficult is that to build the proper team to showcase at events like this or across the country? Yeah, and to follow up, how did you build that team? How did you find those teammates? Yeah, so I got to give credit to my brother Daniel. You know, in the beginning, I was very, I'm a natural introvert. And so I tried to delegate. In the beginning, you try to delegate as a CEO, mm. right? So I delegated to my brother. So he went out and just shook hands with people, just met people, met people, met people. And in the beginning, you'll take uh, whoever you could get, the best you can get. And then over time, you kind of like, and that, that's what was a hard part for me. One of the hardest parts for me was taking the reins back on the barber team from my brother. I let him work on product development. He shifted which is how Zero Gravity actually came about. Mm. So I let him do product development and I took the barber team back because you really have to be a master of, you know, managing and monitoring people's emotions and people's ambitions. So one thing that I do is I take a long time to study what do people really want? Because some people on my team, they want to be national educators. Some people on my team, they just want to work in their shop they want to have main team supporting mm, correct, them correct. and they just want to buy a lot of products and sell it and some people they're not going to sell anything they're not going to they don't want to go to shows they just want to do social media mm, maybe yeah, they correct, can't correct. maybe they can't go to shows because they have a family correct. but they want to do social media so i try to identify who can i get the best of, of each you know each category in each area and you know try to plant people and get people that want to grow with us and that's not an easy thing to do. You know, we get a lot of people that want to be on our team um, and I don't have a chance to talk to them because mostly it's social media. But if I could talk to them, I would ask them, you know, act like you're already sponsored. You have to show what you would do if you were sponsored. You know, because a lot of times people get the wrong impression. They see the videos and they think being on a team is all, you know, getting on planes and, and yeah. eating sushi. And going on tours. And, and going on tours. Yeah. And like, there's so much, like my team, they stay, we're gonna be the last people here today wrapping our palette. You know, my team, they wake up early and they got to do all these things. And a lot of times I can't afford, this is a, a testament to the beauty of my team. A lot of times I can only afford maybe two hotel rooms or three hotel rooms on a trip. My team loves being a part of Maintain so much, and we all get along so great, we're all best friends, 
Some of them will pay their own flight and their own hotel Damn. just to be with us at the show. And Correct. I think, you know, if you were to ask people that say, I want to be sponsors, like, would you do that? Would you pay for your own flight mm -hmm. and your own hotel just to go to this show? Yeah. Like numerous times. And a lot of people, I don't know if they're ready for that. That's that's asking a lot. It's even I don't even ask them to do that. You know, it, it's a beautiful thing. So yeah, having a team is everything. I mean, that's that's the hack. If you're starting a brand, you need people to represent you. You need the right people to not only represent you, but know how to use your products and speak about your products. It's I read something somewhere, bro, where where it actually it says that you gotta see a little bit of you in them for you guys to kind of make it work. How true you feel that is to where they got to believe in your vision and support you as being the CEO, the vision that you have for the team? Or do you like for everyone, as far as your team goes, to input a little bit of them and you learn from them and then you guys set a mission goal? It's, it's kind of like a give and go because I give them that space and that freedom and flexibility to, to kind of to contribute. Like, I'll give you an example. When we launch products, they all get the products before we launch them, all of them. And if any of them have, have changes that they want, I listen to them. So it is, it is very important for us to have that mutual respect where I give them the input, but then they defer to me and follow my leadership and they follow my thing. And, you know, even also, you know, one of the things aside from that is our background because I also look for background. All my team, everybody, un um, underdogs. My team is full of people that have constantly been overlooked in their life, but they have that special quality inside that they know they're meant for something and they want to just give their, their, their energy to something beautiful and something good. And, and so I think that's something that all my team, not only are we going to the same place, you know, but we've also come from the same place where we, you know, like I said, we have so much to give, overlooked in life, underdog, a, people, a lot of people didn't believe in us. We're going the hard way. You know, even my team now, um, you know, the past couple years, they've reached out to every major Clipper company and they got shut down, shut down, shut down, shut down. The Clipper companies, they get a hundred a day. People wanted to, you know, so it's not, yeah. it's not like the personal thing, but it's a constant reminder of, we're all lucky to be able to work together. So yeah, uh, I agree with that. Yeah, you know? yeah Richard, uh, you, you seem really knowledgeable on everything that you're speaking on. And uh, I always I like to ask people, like, where did you get this knowledge? Because it wasn't like you just woke up one day and you're like, I know how to be a CEO. I know about brand uh, development. I know about marketing. I know about project planning. Like, at least uh, what has helped me is I went to college for a, and I got a business administration degree. And I think it cut it short. It didn't really teach me as much as I wanted to know. Uh, so I had to go seek private education. But in your case, what was that resource that you use, or was it just yourself that you're like, you know what? Let me start watching YouTube videos, or let me start watching podcasts, or let me sit down and read. So, what was that for you? I, I guess I've always been curious. I've always been a curious person, and you know, in my early 20s, after college, I also uh, I also got a business degree. After college. I was left with a lot of curiosities. And yeah, so yeah. I would pick up a book here and there and one book really stuck with me and it was about habits. And I was really ashamed of myself because in the book it said like, you know, you had to make a list of your good habits. Yeah. And at that time, man, the only good habit I had was like brushing my teeth and like showering every day. Like I had no good habits. I wasn't journaling, I wasn't running, walking. I, you know, exercise, like I was just like, that's not good. Yeah. I don't want to be the kind of man that doesn't have any good habits. I need to kind of develop that. So we're all the, I, I guess, if I'm polished in any areas now, that comes from just a constant curiosity of what am I not good at? And I don't like that, yeah. you know, like I'm an introvert. So when I'm in elevators, it kills me, oh but I God, try yeah. to comment on something. So if I was an <laughs> elevator, I'd be like, bro, I wish I could grow a beard like you. That looks so sick. Like, that's cool, man. My name is Rich. What's your name, right? Or if I was talking to you, I'd be like, bro, I wish I could color my hair like that. That's so brave. Mm. My parents never let me. I still, yeah. I still regret it. You know? <laughs> like, something, yeah. because my natural instinct is to, like, don't talk to people. Don't step outside your comfort zone. So every area, it, it comes from a curiosity. That curiosity, that's all you need. Once you're curious about that, there's a podcast for everything. There's a YouTube for everything. There's a book for almost everything. Yeah. So I really try to a mix of the things I consume, podcasts and books, 
Uh, and then uh, I, I wasn't blessed enough to have mentors or like, you know, people say find mentors. That's kind of a hard thing to do to yeah. find mentors, right? So for me, it was podcasts, books, and then just learning lessons from my failures. Mm, you know, yeah. I, I, I tell people that work for me, mistakes are going to happen. Failures are okay, but make $50 mistakes, not $5,000 mistakes. Yeah, and then just learn. If you could not repeat the same mistake over and over again, you're going to learn fast. You know, so I think that in order to grow, you have to learn from your mistakes. Yeah, that's awesome because I my first book that I, I, I bought was uh, High Performing Habits, How Ordinary People Become Extraordinary. And that was by Brendan Burchard. And yeah, that was my first book too. Like you said, I was in college and I read that book and I was like, man, I need to start. It sounded too cliche, too corny. Like, ah, I got a journal. I got I to gotta write down my habits. But little by little, like you say, just the podcast, the books, they kept enlightening me and I started getting more information uh, about it. I think one of the questions that a lot of barbers have, uh, and I see that right now is a struggle for a lot, is the financial aspect of the business, of the branding. Uh, so what are like some tips that you could share with the listeners about the financial side of being the CEO? Yeah, that's one of the hardest things because you're going to be forced to compromise. Yeah. In the beginning, you have a vision and you want a podcast to look a certain way or products or packaging. And then you go to do it and you're like, wait, that camera costs how much? <laughs> yeah. that, that light costs how much? Like what? Yeah, you, you have a budget yeah. and then you realize that it's like four times your budget. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. But you know what? There's a way to do everything. There's a way to do everything. And you know, you have to look at again, what's their priority? Like, you know, I ask myself, do I really need this? If their priority is to connect with customers, do I need to do all of that? You know, like, as an example, you know, my office is in downtown LA, so we were gonna ship our products here, talking about money, right? We were gonna ship the products here to get a delivery truck to pick up our pallet, uh, it was two pallets, pick up the pallets in our office, bring it all the way here, drop it off on a Sunday, pick it up on a Sunday, take it back on a Monday, it would have cost $1,200. $1,200 for a weekend delivery. So I said, damn, I, you know. For a weekend and same day. Same kind weekend of. and same day. So I said, you know what? We have a delivery van that we use during the week. I'm gonna spend a $50 Uber from my house to my office. I'm gonna get that, uh, get the truck, drive the products home, okay? Let it sit there, do the thing. Then tomorrow, I'm gonna wake up in the morning, take all this stuff, drive it back to my office, then I'm going to take an Uber home. That Uber is going to cost maybe $60. So round trip, the whole transportation cost, I went from $1,200 down to $110. Yeah. So those are things that you have to like really consider. There's always a way, um, you know, but you just have to kind of measure those things. And yeah. Some things you can't avoid, but like, like, like a flight or a hotel, you kind of can't yeah, avoid great, that. Great. But when it comes to certain things, you have to cut where you can cut. Transportation and, and things like that, yeah. I, I, it's funny because it goes back to what well, KO was speaking. It's like, man, bro, I just want to like, I want one day that we want to have people go and set up the podcast and we just show up, bro. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, bro, that's kind of expensive. Like, <laughs> we don't got that type of budget right now. But I told him for right now, like, I'll wake up early. I'll go pick up the stuff. What drives the stuff, you know? But that's like uh, the same thing, similar to your story. It's like, if we have to wake up earlier and save some money in certain areas, we'll do it, you know? And that's right. the, the CEO part that nobody sees, you know? Yeah. That's like the ugly side that we're, we're sleep deprived, you know? We haven't even ate or, or stuff like that, you know? But we still get it done, you know? Yeah, well, you know, one more thing on the CEO mentality and like pain, bro, there's been so many shows weekend shows where my team comes uh, they come to these events i can't pay all of them but i pay most of them right dude their shows were like my team many things my team makes more money than i do like i'm taking the l you know like and as a ceo you're gonna eat last you know as a ceo you're buying dinner maybe now we're okay a little bit but in the beginning you're buying dinner and then someone says Hey, can I bring my wife? Is it cool if I bring my wife? My wife flew with me. We're in here, you know. And I'm like, what are you going to say? Like, yeah, of course, but I got you. Like, right? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then people are ordering. And in your head, you're like. You're already doing the math. You're right? doing math. You, you know, everyone's laughing, talking, and you're sitting there, and you're doing math. You're like, okay, I think this is probably like 475 by now. You know? You, you, like, sir, you want a refill? No. You want calamari? No, no, no more calamari. You know? <laughs> 
Yeah, so, yeah, yeah that's, part of the job. That's awesome. Uh, I feel so, like it's really important to join, uh, enjoy the journey as you're going, though. You learn, you enjoy it, you fall in love with what you got going on all the time, you know. And the end goal is to be able to do all those things without, you know, have, have, and being able to look back and just laugh about it and create good memories for the brand and stuff. So I think that that's a great thing that you share that with everyone to just have that CEO mentality. Yeah, yeah so uh, uh, before we, we wrap it up, how do you, what do you do to enjoy the journey? How do you keep a, a healthy mentality and a healthy, like how do you maintain yourself physically healthy? Because it could also be a lot of stress. Uh, I think like, one of the days that I was editing the podcast episode, like for two days straight, like I, my eyes were already like twitching, bro. Like, and I'm like, I need to go to sleep. Like, I need to go to sleep. So, what is it that you do to stay uh, mentally healthy? Yeah, you have to identify small wins. You have to identify the purpose in every little thing that you do, because it's so easy to have days or weeks or or shows like this where someone says, "How was the show?" And you're like, it was okay, it was okay. And it's like, if you really deconstruct it, like, no, it wasn't just okay. I met five new distributors there. I bonded with everybody on my team, right? We launched this new product. Like, you know, it's very important to identify yeah, those I small wins. So you have to go like, what am I doing today? And what's like, what are the best things I can do today? You know, mm -hmm. and you have to really like break it down small because no one is gonna clap for you. No one is going to cheer for you. No one is gonna say good job. And you have to keep doing it, like every episode, every day, you have to keep pushing, and it's only you. Maybe you guys have each other, right? And, uh, and, and maybe close family members and a small team, right? But most times, it's just you. So in order to, yeah, because it can be overwhelming yeah. and stressful, yeah. but if you're focused on the small wins, you could celebrate every day and go, you know what, good. I'm glad that we came to this show. I'm glad that we did that. And sometimes, there's victories, that you don't even know about. You know, you go to a show, you meet someone, and then a few months later or a year later, someone buys products. And it's all because you went there and did that one thing. So you don't even realize the victories that you're having along the way. And you know, either way, I started to look at this like a year in, that I'm gonna look at my, my business like I'm an artist, because I am. I'm creating products, formulating products, I'm designing products all by myself, right? And if you look at it like an artist, like art can't be wrong. Right, like right. Art, you know, like if you if you make a sandwich, can that be wrong? Yeah. No. <laughs> like if you make a painting, is that painting art once it sells? Yeah. No. The yeah. painting is art once you paint it. Correct. And correct. products are art once you make them. And if you look at it like that, you'll find ways to be happy more often because you'll feel success in everything you do as an artist. Yeah, and I think that's the goal to every day feel success. And success can be measured, like you said, in the small wins. Uh, before we wrap it up, Dan wanted us to ask you this question. What does For the Culture mean to you? What does it mean to you? Uh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. So when it comes to doing anything, we are a mix of those around us. We carry with us our grandmas and our grandpas and our moms and our dads and our brothers and our sisters. We carry with us a community maybe classmates that we you know, went to school with or people along the way that have been a part of our journey Correct. that injected something into us and you know, gave us that energy. So I think that we owe it to ourselves to be the best version of ourselves. We owe it to our industry. We owe it to our families. We, we, we owe something. There's a debt there. There's a debt. And I think if we all look like there's a debt that we're trying to pay, yeah. then I think that um, the outcome of that is going to be just wonderful blessings that we have to share. So when it comes to culture, I think that's what that is. I think that's what an event like For the Culture should and does represent. Really, people bringing the best version of themselves together as a, as a collective unity to improve not only themselves, their competitors, and the whole industry as a whole. That's great, great. I love that. I love that meaning. Uh, last thing, if you could g give yourself a an advice before you started your brand and you launched it, what would that advice be to your younger self? It would be to know what is success. Because in the beginning, I just wanted to start a brand. I thought that would make me happy. I just want to start a brand. I want to say I'm a business owner, say I'm a CEO. But then you start a brand and you're not happy because you realize, yeah. damn, 
I didn't want to start a brand. I wanted to start a successful brand. All right, right? All right. And then I thought, oh, I want to have a big, beautiful booth. So we spent sixty thousand dollars our second year, big, beautiful booth. You make this big, beautiful booth. People come to the booth. You're not happy, and you're like, damn. What I really wanted was a big, beautiful booth to draw in big customers to do big sales for. You know what I mean? There's right. always like that next thing. Yeah. Right. So I think if you have like a high target you'll know better where to go. But if you just tell yourself, I just want to start a brand, I just want to start a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to it's gonna not be as great as it possibly can be. So Correct. the advice I would have given to myself is, what exactly, like exactly do you want? And then when I say that answer, it's like, and then what? And then what? And, and then, then what? what? Like oh. if you ask someone like, what's your goal next year, this year? A lot of people say, I want to buy a house. Okay, then what? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. You get a dog. Like, okay, <laughs> you have a dog in a the house. Then what? You get a Frenchie. They don't. You know what I mean? Like, they haven't thought it all the yeah, way through. Yeah, correct. And the reason is because that's a BS goal. Because yeah. I have a house, bro. I have rooms I don't even go in. Damn. I have toilets. I have to go once a month, pour hot water and flush it yeah. for the pipes. Damn. You know what I mean? The, yeah, the, the the bigger house doesn't make you happy. Or I was talking to one of my colleagues, and you know, from a happiness standpoint, I was just as happy in my one bedroom apartment. It re it's not the house. It's not the house. I think it's fulfillment. It's yeah. fulfilling the, everything, blessings that we all have inside of us. It's fulfilling that. But it, but again, that just comes from knowing yourself. And so, yeah, in the beginning, that's the biggest hurdle. Know yourself and why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's like this term that uh, blissful dissatisfaction. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's like every time you complete a goal and you do something you want to do, you're blissful. But at the same time, you're dissatisfied. But that's the drive. That's the drive that's always going to keep us going. And I think everyone who has an entrepreneurship mindset, they're always going to experience that blissful dissatisfaction. And I learned that. And it is true. It's like, okay, we started the podcast. Now what? Okay, we finished season one. Now what? You know, like, okay, yeah. let's do season two. You know, so Richard, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, I always wanted to hear the the main uh, the the story behind uh, maintain and today I, I was able to do that uh, so we're gonna pass it up to Ko for you can wrap it up yeah Richard we just want to give you your flowers man and you know we thank you so much for being part of this joining the movement that we have here with the DTB podcast I see you at a lot of shows and all that you know and I, you always look like a very respectful man about his business about his money. And, you know, you're just that, a great CEO, man. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being on our podcast. And we're looking forward to continuing to network with you, bro. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for having me. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Appreciate you both. Good, good luck. Good luck on everything. And then uh, whatever we could help you on, if you ever need us and anything, uh, we're here. Our doors are open. Uh, we just want to give you your flowers, bro. Great job on everything that you've been doing. Uh, you represent the barber culture. You represent the barber entrepreneurs. And I feel like if people want to look up to someone uh, for inspiration, you're a great role model for that, bro. So thank you for being on, on this episode. Uh, and have a great day, brother. Appreciate you guys. Right. Thank you so thank much. You, bro. Brother Coach, you're here, DTB. Let's go. Let's go. Stay down, came up, God made a way.